Hey everybody, this is Eric Clark's Travel Videos and I'm here at the Archaeological Museum and I'm gonna go inside and uh, I'm gonna drag your butt with me. <laughs> Come on, we'll go see. Bye. This is the Archaeological Museum. And you know how all museums go. It's just a lot of reading. That's Eric's coffee cup. So these look like they're all stones from um, all those mythological, or I'm sorry, what do they call those things? Um, megalithic sites that I went to. So an L, oh that's there, so a spiral. And that one doesn't have anything. And it's funny because I'm looking at the pictures trying to determine <laughs> which site they came from, but more spirals. And it's interesting. So the site where it's built, this is the underground. So they built right on top of structures, you know? And so when you look in here, I mean, it goes way, way, way down and way, way, way back. So, which is kind of interesting. So this was stairs to something at one time. Beneath the glass panels at the floor level, one may view some structures remains which form part of the 16th century palace that originally stood on this place. In the 17th century, this older building was partially demolished and the present museum built um, building was constructed in its place. These remains consist of an abandoned stairway and fragmented sculpture blocks were accidentally discovered in the 1996 during the course of refurbished work. Huh. So you're building and then you find something like this. Or like this. This looks like some kind of arch. So there must have been some kind of structure underneath here, huh? Well, you know what? Not to spin you too fast. I'll stay in here first and then I'll go to that other side. Maltese, no, the art, the spiral. So oh, remember the complex, the Tartian Temple one? That's the one that had the stone. This one is actually in um, Aliens, what's it called? Ancient Aliens. Because I know my, my mom and I and my sister talked about the, the stone on top that was put up there by levitation. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, the stone was right about there right when you entered or exited. And you can see these stones are huge, so. You know, the hard part is you can't really get over here and read this. The Tarxian Temple Complex was one of the finest megalithical sites in the head when they excavated to the date. It is located on the east of another prominent Neolithic site the, at the Hal Safini Halogram between the villages of the Core Tarxian um, this is considered to be one of the most elaborate groups of megalithic remains, both in the architectural and the international decoration. The difference building and blah, 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 blah. So there's just a lot there. The Tyraxian Temple Complex was unknown until 1913 when Sir blah, 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 blah discovered it. Okay, well, let's go on. Oh, it's an exit this way. 
Um, you know, how do I always get on these things going backwards? <laughs> they don't have an arrow here that says go this way. So I guess this is the right way to go. Okay, let's go this way then. Neolithic period, 1500, 2500 BC. It's funny that that's represented backwards. Usually we do 2500 to 5900, but since it's BC before Christ or whatever, I know that's not what it stands for, but uh, you know, so if it was 8900, it would be even bigger. But anyway. And so it'll permanently melt in nearly 8,000 years ago. So 8,000 years, so that's 10,000, since it's 2100, so 10,100 years old. And here are the pyramid, or the periods. So the Muslim period, the Byzantine period, the Roman period is only back to you know, maybe 580, blah, 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 BC, bronze period, temple period. That's us. So I've done these, Gigantica, Magar, Zabug, yep. Real early Neolithic periods, Red Scobra, and I think I have a ticket for that. And we did Gard Alam, which is the cave, and it's 6,000 years ago. You know, I say we, like we did it together, but, but I figure you guys are with me, so here we go. Around 14,000 years ago, the attraction of the glacial boundaries in the age of became a flood in the rapid melting ice. 9th millennium BC, the new environment ditch has shown that about 10,000 years ago, long before people arrived on the island, Malta was covered in a thick and fertile organic soil in places and more Bar soil covered, blah, 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 okay. Hmm. You know, I bet even at one point, I bet there was some kind of land bridge between the two that connected them. That's just me thinking out of the box, so don't take that to the bank. Carbon-14 dating is a way of determining age of certain archaeological artifacts of the biological origin of about 50,000 years old. It is used dating, blah, 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 blah. So, huh. So, I guess if they did the ancient oldness, this is 8,000, and since Malta is over here, it is between 65 and 7,000. But that means that Egypt really is 8,000, maybe 10,000 years old, and maybe down even Egypt and, you know, but what about, they say that, you know, for the religious people that Noah was 3,000 years ago? <laughs> I don't know. Don't get me started. Covering the past. And you know my saying, pause as needed. Thanks to the European Research Fund. Accumulated over the past 10,000 years, the results sh uh, showed that a combination of environmental changes associated with soil deterioration and island accelerated to the arrival of human Malta landscape was soon subject to dramatic changes in the uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And so this is Malta. Over here is the little tiny Valletta. And this is where I go to Camino's the little island I go by, which has the Blue Lagoon. And then this is Gozo. So the other day I did the the, what was that place called, Zlindi? That's over there. Huh, they did core samples too, cores being analyzed by the Cool. Animal representations, guard all them. So this is that little cave that I went to. Clay animal heads, these are the earliest animal representations and probably formed part of a vessel. Huh. So it looks like a... So imagine that 
10,000 years ago they were doing this, 8,000 years ago. Okay, moving on. Gardalum. Gardalum phase represents the earliest known farming settlement of the Maltese islands. The phase um, is characterized by representing pottery that is, uh, okay. See, if I read all this to you, it would be here all day. This eye-catching pottery bears very close stylistic affinity with similar impressed blah, blah, blah. And remember, this is that cave that I went in? That went all the way back that they found all the prehistoric animals? The first inhabitants giving strong indication that the first people who inhabited the Maltese island came over from Sicily around 5900 BC. So, what is it, 10,000 or is it 5900? So, 5900 is really 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 8,100, not 10,000 years. So. Gorma, Arts and Crafts. Here's all the spots and pieces from Gardalum. And then here's the cave again. Gardalum, the site. So here they say abundance of remains. Um, right. If I, about 250,000 years ago. So at their site, Gardalum, it was, what was it, 160 to 180,000 years? So this is 250,000 years. So what is that, a quarter of a million? Hmm. We'll, we'll stay on this side for now, I guess. If you see where I am, you see where Man in Malta now began to develop his own distinctive culture in the site of Scorba provides us with the evidence of amazing blah, 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 blah. Okay. Red Scorba 4400-4100 BC. The earliest representative fragments of human figurines most representing the female sex. <laughs> Go figure. This is porno back then. That's Debbie. And she's from Dallas. I thought that was funny. Red Scorpa figurines. Hey dude, you wanna buy a figurine? All right, let's not get carried away with it, Eric. <laughs> Jesus. More pots. Caves. Hi there. Press the green button. Press the green button. Do you see a green button? <laughs> okay, press the green button. <laughs> All right, I don't see a green button, so we're going to move on to this side. Scorba. I just told it there long enough you could probably read it all. 
possible belong to the former structure of the village. So Gar Dalam is down here. Oh, that's right. And isn't the Gray Square, Red Square, Zabug? No, Magar was that one that was over here. Gigantic is over on uh, the island. Gozo. Hmm. And more stuff. And more stuff. And another trick question. Press the yellow button. Man. If you guys see a button, you'd let me know, wouldn't you? Your previous arm here are found almost entirely in the Mediterranean. The oldest example of these found in the central Mediterranean regions of the island, South Sicily, South Italy, Sicily, Sardinia, and Malta, were cradles of this unique culture or phenomenon, the most complex of the underground monuments of the Lake Italy. Okay. The phenomenon reached the most spectacular form in Malta, where the hypogeum held the, the, the $50 buy a ticket to get in, and I can't afford it, so I can't go see it. Um, it was meticulously cut into, I'm gonna do a GoFundMe page. <laughs> it was meticulously cut into large, compromised, complex areas and passageways and chambers. So literally, you have to buy the ticket, the regular ticket, and then you have to buy a get-in ticket. And this is what it looks like inside, I guess. And so it's these caves back in the day. Hmm. Well, that's cool, I get to read all of that. That's not English. The development of prehistoric burial monument chambers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, persisted in the extreme period of Maltese prehistoric. However, the burial monument, okay. Okay. In Gigantica, let's have been there, some of the Talk a lot about that thing. The period also saw finalizing the embellishment of the expansion of the Central Cave Lake. The house in have again was expanded to include two other levels beyond the existing previously um, during the Zabug Gigantica. Blah, blah 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 blah. The practice of collecting collective burial in rock tombs. Blah blah blah. Six thousand years ago. <laughs> yada yada yada. Okay. Funeral ceremonies. More porn. She has a hair problem. And more stuff. The student asked the anthropologist Margaret Mead, what is the earliest sign of civilization? The student expected her to say a clay pot, a grinding stone, or maybe a weapon. Margaret Mead thought for a moment, then she said, a healed femur, femur, right? The femur is the longest bone in the body, linking the knee to the hip in society. Without the benefits of the modern medicine, it takes about six weeks of rest for a fractured femur to heal. A healed femur shows that someone cared for the injured person, did their hunting, gathering, stayed with them, and offered physical protection and human companionship until the until it mended. Wow, that's really amazing, huh? Mead explained amazing. Explain Mead explained that there are laws in the jungle of survival of the fittest rules. No healed femurs are found. The first sign of civilization is the compassion seen in a healed femur. Wow. Wow, so they really did break their femur and it had to be sedentary enough that it would actually join and heal. Yeah, that's pretty staggering, actually. Yeah, crazy, crazy. I didn't know that. And I didn't know that they didn't have them in Africa either. That's pretty crazy. You know, but I bet that in Africa they had uh, more animals, more threat, and maybe they couldn't, they couldn't devote a person to taking care of another person. Sorry, I'll stop yakking. Yeah, 
the upper jaw fragment with a hardened plaque adhering to the teeth. The teeth are in very good condition with just some evidence of tooth decay and a hardened plaque. Some upper and lower jaw shows evidence that people lost their teeth long before they died. That's really nice. Some teeth, especially in the front incisors, show evidence of intentional chipping. Huh. Why would they chip them? Maybe to knock out a cavity or something? Huh. Amazing, huh? Okay, and so this must be the layout of that how place that I don't get to go to. So it's like maybe you enter and there's different chambers, maybe a well or something. And then it looks like there's a whole bunch of different layers. And then even more layers. Wow. You know, am I gonna regret not going to that? Underground prehistoric cemetery 10 meters below the current road surface. So 10 meters is what, 30 feet? And all of the sites covers the area of about 500 square meters and is made up of three levels, although the three levels share common features, distinct elements, and levels of um, craftsmanship mark their individual characters. The functional of each layer level may be, have been slightly different up a level. This level was made up of courtyard-like space that had been carved out of the surface permanently. The space was inter... Okay. Huh. The middle level... It's, it's 30 units. Wow. That's pretty crazy. The lower level, deepest level, known as the lower level, is accessible through the finely carved trilithium? Trilithon? Down seven steps from the chamber, which is popularly known as the Holy of Holic, Holies. Traces, uh, okay. Huh. Pretty amazing stuff, everybody. Wow, so this is what it looks like inside there. And it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well. The house, of, you know, the house of, you know, the underground prehistoric burial site discovered in 1902 during the construction. First opened to the public in 1908. For this reason, years of monitoring and study and advanced environmental control systems. Okay. 10 visitors per hour and a maximum of eight hour day. That's why the tickets, I guess, are so much, huh? The House of Hume is only prehistoric burial site, um, which is accessible to the general public and is inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage List as the site that bears a unique testimony to the civilization which has disappeared. Huh. Wow. Hmm. Two artifacts of articulated skeletons found during a 1900. They were together, like husband and wife, maybe? The wonders of, this is Gigantica. I remember that site. Um, 3600 BC. Amazing. Number four. More artifacts. Engineering craftsmanship. The building of Mafia 
some tasks such as transportation may have required dozens of people, other such as delicate setting stones would require. The temple builders used different types of stones for their construction of the upper level column of limestone. So did they carry things this way? So that they'd get a couple of people to grab onto that so they could carry it? You know what I mean? So maybe, you know, one person here, another person here, and then another person there, so four people could carry an object? Hmm. Pretty amazing. Huh. You can see how big the... And I've seen that, you've seen that picture from me before. Where the temples rose, they were. That's that place again. House Safini Hydrogen. Okay. Boy, there's just a lot here, people. Okay, so let's do some comparison. So. So the Taj Mahal was built in 1632. The Basilica of St. Peter was 1506. Great Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, 1300. Notre Dame Cathedral, 1163. The statues of Easter Island, those guys, 1100. 725, city of Copan, Honduras. 563 is the Hagia Sophia. The Great Wall was 12 or 214, 70. So the Colosseum of Rome was built at 70 AD. The Acropolis, where I'm going next, which is Athens, that's 600. The Palace of Konos in Crete, 1700. Stonehenge, 2000. The Great Pyramids, 2563. And then Gigantica Temple, Temple, 3600. That's pretty amazing. And I'll step back and you can kind of take a peek at that. Pretty crazy. And just more artifacts and such. Prehistoric architecture. Is this Gigantica? This is, yes, Gigantica. And we know that one. And Manjira, we did this one too. And then Haga Quem, we did this one too. Huh. So some of these places were obviously older than um, on that board, 3600 Gigantica, which is kind of amazing. Hmm. This is where that stone was. Uh, oops, that says go that way. I guess I'll go this way then. Historic animals. Animal art, sorry. <sighs> That's 
that stone they took out up there. Animal sacrifices, a tomb suicide. Megaliths of two bulls, or possibly one bull and one cow, in the south, like when you're appearing Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's a See, I didn't see that. You know, you just don't know what to see all the time. Prehistoric menu. We're good with that. Press the red button. Yeah, right. More sites. Please don't touch. Okay. <laughs> Press the yellow button. But I want to see this one too. Hagger Quim Altar. Single block of inner limestone. Huh. And this was in that cave too. This must be the original movie. Hugging statue. Both found broken and uh, expect what's like uh, Yeah, because I've seen these. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to do it. Hair Quim statues. They're all headless. And why were they headless? Jesus. Meant to have separate heads. So if you want a little head, you could. Let's go grab one. Okay. Why would you want to take a head off? Why would you take it with you? That just doesn't make a lot of sense, but I guess they, they made them that way, huh? I wonder if they represented people, and so when the people died, you could take the head off or something? I don't know. Or maybe it was the king and they just put a new person's head on there to represent the new king? I don't know. The Venus and the female statues. Shoulder blades. Wow, that's pretty amazing for 8,000 years ago, huh? process of gradually changing things, so this is kind of a, okay. I think I've done all these. Phallic, Phallic representations. Phallic representations are very common pre-surfing and mainly it's associated with a male. Fertility and fertility, some of the phallic carvings I've seen associated with that culture. Type of decorations. Huh. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Votive offerings. Interesting. 
So her hand is reaching down between her legs and her breasts and is this a belly button or and is this a well anyway interesting this is her laying down Pretty amazing place, huh? Lots of information. I think that's the end of this one. So now I think I go to the other side. Or actually, it's upstairs, I think. Yep, 15 is this way. Phoenician period and monastic period. Wow. Wow, wow. Ah. I wonder if I get to go in there. Go this way. Bronze Age. So the temple is older, so this is newer. These are more modern people. So they had tools probably, better pottery. Designs on the pottery. So this is the Taraxian cemetery phase. This is the Oregon Nabor. And this is the Baharina phase. Hmm. Okay. See that for you. Uh, the mountains. 
sites, most of the sites that I've been to, almost all of them have been out just like on an open plain, so they could have been attacked or whatever. But I guess as things got more current and people were sailing maybe, or the Vikings were out and about, or the Greek or what have you, they could get attacked. So they needed a defensive holding, huh? Look at that entrance, it's just a hole in the ground. What is this? On the 16th of November, 1964, a team of cave explorers from firstly Moscow group went in search of a cave entrance on Dingley Cliffs. What we had hoped for was discovering a new cave to explore. I did this what we had with my drone. was beyond all our wildest dreams. Evidence of a family or community of Bronze Age period who may have used the cave as a home. A catastrophe had befallen this cave in that the extensive roof had collapsed some 3,000 years ago and buried all their belongings where they stood. The cave was aptly named Armour Doom, which is Maltese for Merit Cave, by one of the team members, after much debate. During the first exploration, we found potsherds, just a few, but enough to give us an interest in reporting the matter to the archaeological department. Mr. Francis Malia, who was the curator of archaeology, gave us permission to go ahead, and in actual fact came down the cave with us during the filming in January the following year. So the filming in actual fact was the result of the archaeological department's permission for us to proceed and work on their behalf in the cave. I have no helmets, no safety shoes, no, no gloves. Working with me were Bernard Storch, There's a helmet. Vincent Shibaras, Ernest Juman, and Vincent Bujaya. Others did follow through the years and carried on the dangerous but rewarding excavation. The cave was originally a cliff face cave whose roof had collapsed, evidenced by the discovery of a child's body under a pile of rocks. The dangerous structure of the collapsed cave contributed to the name, as I have said earlier, Armadoum. The local civil defense unit also supplied us with a telephone system to keep in touch. We worked every weekend for some two years and made detailed drawings Every weekend for two years, wow. And Look, these are all the things they found the inside there. The way the complex, and also wow. to help the archaeological department to place the items found. Wow. Is this what it was at up in here? Using plastic techniques, the cave is no longer accessible. Huh. for weaving.
beads and glass manufacture east of other uh, ostrich eggshells from North Africa. So they were trading back then. Hmm. Cart ruts, so they'd have the carts, they just keep following the cart rut. And that's what these are, so you could see this one went off to California and this one went off to Arizona. Huh. Phoenician period. So this is 500 BC. Seafaring, so we got better. We were, now we're sailing. Instead of people just sailing to us, now we're sailing to other places. Here are people's thoughts and ideas and fashions. Hmm. Discovered two inscriptions on the pottery containing bones of children. Hmm. Containers for the dead.
Interesting. Laugh with strong heart at your enemies, make fun of weak and attack the adversary, despise him, crush him over the waters, bring him down over the seas, tie him, hang him. Hmm. Is there another way to go here? Am I missing something? No. Sorry. Somebody's got some perfume. is a finished coin that is ready for use. So this is just all coins. There's lots of them, huh? my coins in here. Conrad. I still want to see in here though <laughs> because it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Okay, I think there's one more thing to see downstairs and then we'll be done. Thanks everybody, bye. Okay, this is the last section.
tightening by the long heads. I'm at the door of my head. Hmm. So did they really think there were aliens here? Phones are finding great numbers of skeletons could be made out of the whole in the new caves are clear that the years before the haphazard way. Okay, well that's interesting. a lot in here. This is the one that's interesting. Alien or human? Belong to the Ethiopian family Africa. Interesting. Okay, everybody. I think that's it. We end with aliens. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for watching this far. Bye.